Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Refuron, and today we're going to be doing another tier list. This is going to be for Fallout 3, and we're going to be looking at the pistols today. I somewhat recently did the Fallout 3 DLCs and where I put them and kind of explained why as to as also as to what they are. So this time we're going to be going over the pistols. I'll likely do this with each type of weapon, and we'll probably do this with like some perks and maybe some other uh, things about Fallout 3 since we recently played through it. This really depends on what difficulty you're playing on in Fallout 3. You could set this to a very easy and have all of these weapons perform very well. You can pick whatever the heck you want. If you set it to very hard, you can also make any weapon work very well if you just put on like really heavy armor, have tons of bullets, tons of stim packs, and tons of drugs. Any weapon can work, so let's uh, let's talk about each of these in terms of just how good they are compared to one another. So our very first pistol is the 32 pistol. You can find this one laying around pretty much anywhere in the wasteland. A lot of raiders have it. A lot of the wastelanders have it. It's pretty bad. It does low damage. It actually has a pretty fast rate of fire, though. You can shoot it pretty quick. Um, you can reload it very fast, too, but with such low damage, it's usually not worth taking, and it takes the same bullets as the hunting rifle. The hunting rifle is a far better choice, so I would put this one down into D tier. It's it's kind of cool. I like that you actually get a break action revolver in the game, but it's not a good weapon to be using at really any time. Our other one is the unique one, and I have no idea why it rendered in so poorly compared to the other one, because these are supposed to be the same exact model as you can kind of see with other guns that have the same exact model, at least uh, when holding them. This one just rendered in horribly wrong. Anyway, this is Wild Bill's sidearm. This is from the Pit DLC. You can find this just laying on his body. It's very easy to find him because he's kind of out in the open um, when you're looking around for the steel ingots. This one's pretty much twice as strong as the standard gun and then shoots the, at the same rate of fire, has the same accuracy, the same everything, but it's still pretty bad. Even though you have double the damage of the base one, the base one already has incredibly low damage that even if you go full damage perks with this, it's still not that great. These weapons also take more action points than some of the other weapons like the 10mm pistols and have lower overall stats, which just makes them pretty poor. Again, another D tier. It's better than the other one, but not by much. Then we move on to the 10mm pistols, which is your very first actual gun that you get in the game besides the BB gun. So the regular 10 millimeter pistol does low damage, although it has a very high rate of fire compared to a lot of the other guns. It holds 12 rounds and it is very efficient in terms of action points, which the VAT system is quite strong in Fallout 3. This makes it a pretty solid weapon for the start and not even a bad weapon to pick up later on if you just want to spam fire it at smaller enemies. It works really good for that. You can find it pretty much everywhere, so it's not hard to keep repaired either. I'd put the regular or regular 10mm into C tier. We have the unique 10mm next, which is Colonel Autumn's 10mm. Now, if you want to get this officially in the game, you kind of have to do a weird glitch, I guess, or a weird bug, where once Colonel Autumn is incapacitated uh, at the Project Purity, you can then go into third person, spin the camera around, and then loot his body from there, and then get it. This is just slightly stronger than a regular 10mm pistol. Other than that, it has like the same stats, same uh, action point cost, same accuracy, everything like that. So probably into C tier as well. You might use it, um, but at that point in the game, you could potentially have better weapons too, depending on how quickly you went through the main story. If you just rush through the main story, then it will be just an upgrade to your 10mm pistol. Our next one is the silent 10mm, which is pretty much the same as the regular 10mm. But this one's suppressed so that it's harder to hear, I guess. Sneak is kind of weird in Fallout, and if you have maxed out Sneak, it doesn't really matter if you have a suppressor. You could be firing a shotgun at point-blank range and enemies still won't find you. The suppressor maybe helps, but I honestly haven't seen much, and this is just weaker than the regular 10mm pistol. Just slightly, though. Not very much, so I'd also probably put this into C tier below the regular one. So one other thing that I forgot to mention about the silent 10mm pistol is that it actually does have a higher crit chance than the regular 10mm pistols at a 2 times multiplier where all the other weapons we've talked about so far just have a single 1 times multiplier on them. So double the crit chance is potentially better than the regular uh, 10mm if you have high, if you have high luck, um, or if you're going with like the finesse perk and stuff like that, which usually you do because crits are quite strong in Fallout 3. So this one could potentially be higher than the regular 10mm, uh, potentially higher than Colonel Autumn's 10mm too, if you count in the crit chance. Next up we have the Chinese pistols. These are also 10mm pistols. They are based off the C96, the uh, Mauser C96 pistol. I really like the design of them. Unfortunately, they're pretty bad. They have less than half the damage of standard or standard 10mm pistols. Um, and they have about the same rate of fire, but since it's half the damage, you're doing half the amount of DPS. 
These have um, about the same amount of action point costs. So as the same as the 10 millimeter and they're less accurate than the 10 millimeter. They're all around just a really bad weapon, especially since you get the 10 millimeter for free at the very start. And it's not hard to find 10 millimeters. It's not even that hard to find silent 10 millimeters. So the Chinese pistol is just awful. I'd probably even put it lower than the 32s because at least the 32s do somewhat have a purpose in that they can be used with a different bullet. Uh, but you could argue that they're just as bad. The unique Chinese pistol is the Zurong uh, version 418 Chinese pistol. I think I'm saying that correctly, but I could be wrong. This one you find at the LOB Enterprises, I think. The building, you have to get to the top of it, and then it's inside of a briefcase that you either need a key for or you need 100 lockpicking to get to. This is a little bit stronger than a regular Chinese pistol, but it does fire damage, which does damage over time. And it is also affected by the Pyromaniac perk so that you can actually get more damage on it. That being said, it's still low damage. It does have a two times multiplier in terms of crits. So it's a bit better, but not by much. I mean, if you are, if you do have Pyromaniac, I would say it's better than the 32s. But if you don't, then it's probably on the same level as them. And I still don't think it's just as good as something like the Silent 10 millimeter. Our next pistol that we're going to be taking a look at is the Dart Gun. And this one is very interesting. This one does very low damage. This one you can only make with, uh, if you have the schematic and the parts. You need a paint gun, a Rad Scorpion Stinger, surgical tubing, and... Oh, and a toy car to make this weapon. So you need all that, plus the schematic. You can find up to three schematics, or if you take the perk Warmonger, then you can just have the schematic naturally, but that's not unlocked until much later into the game. So it might just be better to find the actual schematics of these. Now this one does pretty low damage per shot and pretty low damage per second, although it does do poison damage, so it does damage over time. This has uh, one of the higher crit chances out of any of the pistols at two and a half times multiplier. And this is an incredibly accurate pistol having no spread. So exactly where you're aiming is where the dart is going to go. That is really good, as well as this has a unique function that if you hit any sort of enemy with this, it instantly cripples their legs. That is incredibly strong as a tool. Um, maybe not so much as a weapon, because if you only want to use the dart gun as a weapon, it will take a very long time to kill enemies. You can find darts just laying around everywhere, though, so it's not like you're going to be short on ammo and I think you can buy them fairly frequently at any sort of merchant uh, so even if you are running out you should be able to resupply yourself very easily and I don't think darts are expensive at all. Being able to cripple limbs is incredibly important though if you can cripple a, a Yao Guai or a Deathclaw they can't catch up to you you can just run away from them and if you combine this with something like a shotgun where you can easily just stay at optimal range with it then it's incredibly strong so as a tool I would easily say that this thing is S tier but uh as a weapon itself, if you were only in, uh, planning on using this as a weapon, it'd probably be like high D tier or low C tier. Not that great as a weapon by itself, but really useful just to have on hand uh, to shoot at enemies. Then we move on to the 44s, and we have three that are scoped and one that isn't. So we have the base 44, which has decent damage, uh, decent rate of fire. The scope on it makes it so you can see things from a good distance away. It's pretty accurate. Um, it's not the most action point efficient but it's strong regardless, and it's a pretty good gun overall. Um, I'd probably put this one into B tier. Our next one is the Blackhawk. We get this from a quest. This one's just a unique version that's stronger than the regular uh, 44 Magnum. Uh, quite a bit stronger, by 20 points more. Other than that, it has the exact same stats. Very good, though, uh, and it's not really all that difficult to get during the mission. I think I'd probably put this one... I think I'd put this one into A tier. It's quite a bit better than the regular 44. Um, so I think I'd put it up there. And then our last scoped one is Callahan's Magnum. This is a reference to Dirty Harry, and this is only available in the DLC Broken Steel. You can only get this by bombing the Brotherhood at the very end of the main campaign, and then coming back and getting it, which means you made enemies with the Brotherhood. You also potentially cut off quite a few quest lines that you could have completed, assuming you didn't complete them beforehand. So it's not really the best, as well as this is at the very end of the game. It's still stronger than the Blackhawk, but it's way more of a hassle to get. And it's only a little bit stronger than the Blackhawk. All the 44s, though, do have a 2 times multiplier in terms of crits, which is really nice. I'd still probably put this one higher than the Blackhawk, because weapon to weapon, it is just a straight upgrade to it. I wouldn't put it into S tier, though. I don't think it's that crazy. And then our last revolver is Pulson's Revolver. This you can get on Mothership Zeta. This is if Pulson the Cowboy dies, you can loot this off of his corpse. And this 
revolver is incredibly strong. This revolver does less damage than uh, either the Blackhawk or Callahan's Magnum per shot, but that's because the shot is spread amongst multiple pellets. So this does count as a shotgun. And shotguns in this game are incredibly strong because every time you hit a crit, it, cr it counts as a crit going towards every pellet. So just having that makes it so that you're doing an incredible amount of DPS when you do hit crits. And if you're going to the crit build, this is an incredibly strong weapon like most of the shotguns in this game. I'd put this one up into S tier. I'm not sure if I'd put it above the dart gun. In terms of a weapon, yeah, I would. But in terms of just overall usefulness... The dart gun still might be winning there because it is just so useful. Up next, we have the submachine guns. I put them here because I we only have two submachine guns in this game, so we might as well talk about both. We have the standard 10mm. This does less damage than the regular 10mm pistol, but it has a higher rate of fire and a larger magazine. Uh, this weapon is also less accurate, but not all that inaccurate compared to the pistols. But where it kind of struggles is crits. It's not going to hit crits all that often. So if you want to spray at smaller enemies, it can work pretty well at that, but I'd probably put it lower than the regular 10mm just because the lack of crits for it. Then we have the unique version, which is Sydney's 10mm uh, Ultra SMG. This one does higher damage slightly by, I think, two base, by two base damage from the regular 10mm. Uh, Still has crit problems, but holds more bullets. This one holds 50 rather than 30, so that's a nice improvement. Other than that, it's mostly the same. So this one's better, but still not way great. I'd probably put it at the top of uh, C tier. You might use it if you just have an excess of 10 millimeter rounds, which is possible. Uh, I usually do when I'm playing through Fallout 3. All right, now we're going to move on to the energy pistols. So our first one is the Alien Atomizer. This one is from Mothership Zeta. This one's a gun that you can find everywhere. Uh, it's very common for the aliens to have. This does good damage per shot, has pretty high DPS. Um, it's pretty accurate. It has good crit chance. Uh, it's pretty action point efficient. So, and it holds 20 rounds. All around pretty good. Um, there's not really much to complain about. It's better than most handguns, and I probably put it up into B tier. The unique version of it is the Pulverizer. You can actually find two of these, I believe, on the map. They're just kind of stuck on a shelf in one of the rooms. So if you find them, cool. If you don't, it's not a big deal. This one's just slightly better uh, in terms of damage, but it is quite a bit better in terms of action points. Where the regular one takes 20 action points with each shot, this one takes 12. So if you build a full action point build, this one is going to be way stronger and a pretty ammo efficient weapon. So this one I'd probably put on the high end of B tier if you're going with that build. If not, then it's basically the same as the Atomizer. And then we have the Alien Blaster. The Alien Blaster does incredibly high damage, incredibly high damage per second, has a 100% crit chance. So even if you're not building a crit build, you'll still hit really hard. Holds a decent amount of shots at 10 and it's incredibly accurate. The main problem is you're just only going to find a few rounds for this throughout the game. You will find ammo where you find it at the alien spaceship, which if you have Mothership Zeta is going to be much easier for you to find. Although you do have to go through Mothership Zeta then to get it because you're not going to be able to grab it before you get abducted unless you're using cheats or whatever. And you can find a few more rounds later on into Broken Steel, as well as you could potentially find rounds during the unique special event of the Fire Lance, which we'll talk about in a second. So your ammo is limited, but it is incredibly powerful. So, I mean, if you had unlimited ammo, S tier. If not, where it currently is, I honestly think it's just kind of like a B tier or an A tier weapon. I'm going to put it in A tier because it is incredibly powerful, but I rarely use it. So I'm just going to put it there. Next up, we got the Captain's Sidearm. This is kind of supposed to be a unique version of the Alien Pistol a little bit, but it doesn't take the same ammo. So this ammo you just find laying around the ship in Mothership Zeta and you can actually get resupplied from it. So it's not as restricting. This one does count as a shotgun, but honestly its shotgun form is just kind of okay. I wouldn't say it's as strong as like Pulson's revolver. It, it's decent. It feels very similar to like the regular um, Alien Blaster and I'd probably still put it up into A tier because it is really strong. But uh, like I said, I don't really use it all that much. Then we've got the Firelands. This is weaker than the regular Alien Blaster, and it's way more rare because this just spawns randomly on the map in one of the random uh, locations, and it can be incredibly hard to find. If you have dog meat, it's much easier to find because you can send him out to find it, and same with the ammo for it. Ammo is limited. This does do fire damage, so Pyromaniac actually does tons of damage with this, and I'd probably put it on the same level as the Alien Blaster. It's cool, but I practically never use it. And then we have all of our laser pistols. First up is the regular laser pistol. This does decent damage, um, at least early on. Really high rate of fire. Has a above average crit chance. 
very uh, action point efficient, and it's very accurate. It also holds, holds 30 rounds, so this one is quite strong, at least early on, and I'd probably put it up into C tier. For unique versions, we have Colonel Autumn's pistol, which you can get off of him towards the end of the regular campaign of this. This is more damage per second, less damage per shot, way worse crit chance, and about the same, well, the same accuracy, the same action points. So... Since you get it towards the end, it's honestly not all that great. Probably at the bottom of C tier. Colonel Autumn's laser pistol from Broken Steel. This one hits harder per shot, does less damage per second, has the regular crit chance to it, and um, the regular action points, everything like that. It's, it's very similar to the regular laser pistol. I'd probably also put it up into C tier with it. Then we have the Protectron's Gaze. You can get this from the Mechanist if you side with him during the Superhuman Gambit quest. And this acts like a laser pistol shotgun, so it's already going to be good. But I find that this one's kind of lacking, even though you get a lot of shots for it. Uh, 20 rounds in it, and you can get pretty decent damage per second because of crits. It's still not as good as uh, some of the other shotgun weapons in the game, so I'd probably put this one up into B tier. And then our last one is the Smuggler's End. You get this one at the um, Citadel. So you need 100 lockpicking to get it. And honestly, it's pretty meh. It's pretty much the exact same weapon as Colonel Autumn's laser pistol, which is barely better than a regular laser pistol. So also into C tier. And then we've got a more unique weapon. We have the Mesmatron, which actually does no damage, really. Or it does one damage. It does the lowest amount of damage that you can do and it will stun enemies. You also have a very limited amount of shots with this. You get this from the smug or you get this from the slavers over at Paradise Falls and you can enslave people with this, which I mean in itself can be kind of fun and funny to use on certain characters throughout the game as well as you can use it to steal stuff from people, which I like, but as an actual gun it's definitely D tier. It's probably the worst weapon to be using simply because it doesn't really function as a weapon. It functions way more as a tool. And as a tool, it's more of just a meme rather than actually being super useful like the uh, dart gun. So D tier for that. Now, the unique version of it is the microwave gun, which you can find in Point Lookout. This is towards the end of the, well, I guess it's the end of the main quest that you can get this. It's just sitting on a bench at the end. And uh, this does really high damage per shot, although it shoots very slow. But this does hit very hard with crits, and it has a two times crit chance, which can be kind of nice. Overall, I never really use this thing though, and it's just, again, it's kind of, it feels more like a meme to me. So I'd probably put it into like C tier as well. Not bad, but not great. And then our last weapons are the plasma pistols. So the regular plasma pistol is just sort of okay. It does decent damage per shot, decent damage per second, two times crit chance, fairly accurate, um, holds 16 rounds. You can shoot it pretty fast. It, it's fairly accurate, except for that you actually have to lead your shot because the plasma does take time to travel. Pretty good, I would say, as a pistol, so I'd put this one into B tier. And then the last we have the MPLX Nova Surge. This one does way more damage than a regular plasma pistol, um, has much higher crit chance, has much higher DPS, although this one does degrade very quickly. So you will need to fix this pretty often, um, and this does take two ammo every time that you shoot it. So even though you have 16 rounds, it does suck through the rounds very quick. It was the same way with the uh, captain sidearm. I forgot to mention that. But you can eat through ammo very fast with this, although it does hit incredibly hard. So I'd probably put this one at the top end of A tier. I think that this is probably the most good or the most well-rounded pistol that's not just kind of broken in its own right to be an S tier. Thanks everybody for coming out here and watching this. If you'd like to see more of this stuff, be sure that you get subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post these. Special thanks to all the supporters of the channel. I really do appreciate that. If you would like to be a part of this, these are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. There are links down in the description where you can join either of those and you get early access to videos like this. Uh, if you'd like to see more Fallout 3 related stuff, be sure to click over here on this list. Um, that's either going to take you to a playlist of videos that I've made for Fallout 3 or to the actual full like playthrough series that we stream through of Fallout 3. Thanks everybody, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Till then, stay cool. Bye.